In this tutorial, I will share a powerful technique for musicians who want to compose using music trackers. My name is Matthew Ivick, and I've used tracker programs to compose music for video games appearing on several different platforms. At first, writing music within tracker programs can seem like a daunting task. Aside from foreign nomenclature, unmusical interfaces, and quirky emulation glitches, there's also the task of actually composing the music you want to create. So, what is the best way to learn how to compose music within a tracker program? Plan ahead. This may seem counterintuitive, but when starting out, composing music within a tracker program is not the most effective way to create. This is because most tracker programs are not flexible and often require the user to define aspects of the piece ahead of time. For example, by default, most tracker programs use row highlights to define a piece's meter. In a program like FamiTracker, the default row highlights divide the beat into four. If our piece is in a compound or odd time signature, we're already in a bit of trouble. That isn't to say this can't be corrected later, but having a general idea as to the metric flow of your music is a good place to start. Speaking of which, if you want to learn more about changing meter in FamiTracker, there's a video for that on this channel. Similar issues arise when changing other musical parts mid-piece, like rows per pattern, pattern numbers, phrase structure, and form. These attributes are global and predefined. In other words, if you try to fix one parameter, you'll often end up changing the entire work. If you have a plan as to how your piece will go, you can get a handle on these attributes early on and avoid pulling out your hair later. This is where planning comes in. The more we know about a piece ahead of time, the easier it is to program into our tracker. Don't worry. For those of you who don't understand what I mean by planning, don't know how, or don't jive with it while working creatively, I'll share a method with you later that'll address some of these issues. For now, let me explain briefly what planning is, why planning is so effective, and how to do it exactly. What is planning in music composition? In music composition, a plan is a method for developing music. This may include everything from determining a piece's length, to setting a formal structure, deciding on the time and key signature, and more. And yes, when planning, the musical material like melody and harmony are still important, but the primary focus is how the material is used and developed. Why is planning so effective? Planning is effective because it gives a piece direction. If we want to write a fugue, for instance, we may take the subject we've written and prepare the necessary permutations and transpositions. Additionally, we may draw upon all the wisdom, knowledge, and elite skills from past composers. For chiptune composers specifically, think about it this way. In an ideal world, if you wanted to create music with a tracker, the easiest way would be to have a piece already composed. That way, all you would have to do is worry about inputting the correct notes and the music's arrangement. Even if we're not completely writing out an entire piece beforehand, we're at least eliminating a lot of uncertainty about what we'll have to do. In a sense, separating composition and tracking is a lot like traditional music making. In a traditional performance, there's a composer who composes the music, and there's a performer who performs the work. With tracker music, there's still a composer who composes the music, but the performer is the tracker which executes a performance created by the composer. In other words, the composition and the performance can be thought of as two separate things, each which to serve their own special attention. How to plan. If you're an experienced composer, you probably have some idea of what I'm talking about when I say plan your piece. For example, if you're writing a waltz, you may use the ABA type form. If you have two melodies, you may decide that the first melody will permeate the A section, and your second melody will be used for the B section. Also, since this is a waltz, you will also probably use 3, 4, or 6, 8 time with a relatively quick tempo. Stating what we'll compose, in this case a waltz, creates a basic plan for a piece. Knowing all these details would let us set up our tracker file pretty neatly, and therefore help us compose a lot more efficiently. For those of you who don't enjoy planning or have trouble converting sounds you hear to discrete tracker data, there's a pretty easy solution to this. Use another piece that's already written. This can be one of your own works or another composer's. It doesn't matter. The point here is that you're trying to get experience converting pieces from one form to another. To get used to this, try converting a short piece from standard notation to the tracker format of your choice. If you don't have access to sheet music, I highly recommend IMSLP, a music library which has all sorts of music by hundreds of different composers. And it's free. 
By copying pre-made pieces to the tracker format, you'll get experience analyzing what real music looks like in standard notation and in the tracker format. Extra bonus points if you transcribe pieces, as this is an excellent ear training opportunity as well. Either way, this will provide a solid foundation as to what will and won't work when composing music in or outside the tracker. Thanks for watching.